Shalom. Good morning. Sister Kate here. It's going to be a hot one today. So I was doing my dishes this morning. Let me get these out of the way. Ugh. Doing my dishes this morning, sweating. Um, and Pastor Joe had sent me another of the Gorilla Mountain blog posts. Uh, he has a, a Patreon, and that's where he's posting these blogs. And I'm not going to talk about it in depth because, well, that's like stealing from the guy. If you want to read it, you should become a, a patron of his. But I found it fascinating that he and I are running parallel on our views about the COVID. Um, and the reason it's fascinating to me is because we are very different people. His, his religious views are different. His social views are different. His cultural views are different. And his background the only thing that we have in common is I was a military dependent and he was in the military that's it um, <clears throat> we're probably almost about as different as you can two people can get so for us to both be saying the same thing that tells me something now I'm not even sure what he's basing his opinions on um, I, I don't know if he's had medical training. I know what his specialty was, and uh, it wasn't medical. Um, and that's not to say he didn't get training, because in the military you get training in all kinds of things. But it, maybe it's just his analysis of numbers, because he seems to do some, some research into things. And he also, I agree 100% in his opinions on people who are just doing this with COVID. I don't see it. I don't hear it. It's not a real thing. You're in, you're in denial, people. Um, you are stuck in the OODA loop on Orient. You observe. You see things happening. And to orient yourself, you have to like, okay, so this is happening. You have to accept something's happening. And then you have to make some decisions, and then you have to kind of act on those decisions. And right now, you're still in Orient, and you're blah, 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 I don't want to hear, I don't want to know. It's a pretty uh, serious issue. So <clears throat> I, can, I can understand where people don't want to accept it, and especially if it's not personally affecting you yet. Now, if you go to New York City and you ask people about it, they're going to know something. They probably know someone who has it or had it. Uh, plenty of people have grandparents in, in nursing homes who have caught it in Washington State and places like Arizona and so on. So <clears throat> there are people who it is directly affecting now. And it's the same thing with uh, the Spanish flu that I'm talking about. <clears throat> It's a real thing. It's a historical event. There are news articles. There are photos. Uh, there were decisions taken and actions happened in that flu. 50 million people dying worldwide is not something you can make up. You just can't make that up. And now they're saying with research, because um, archaeologists are, are going into grave sites. I think they dug up somebody in Alaska even who had uh, that illness died of that illness up there and they were trying to research what virus it was and it was h1n1 so this this denial of the history the the not i mean i've had people say a virus is not a virus it's your body responding well here's a little clue you guys with no medical training who are reading this stuff on the internet it's disinformation it's misinformation your body is in a a, uh, a state called stasis and what that means is it's in balance and that's where your body wants to stay unless you inject something into the process your body is in stasis your heart's beating the way it's supposed to your blood pressure is you know, where it's supposed to be, you're hungry when you're supposed to be hungry, you're tired when you're supposed to be tired. And when you start injecting things into that process, like you're drinking every day, drinking alcohol, copious amounts every day, your body is not designed for that. Um, if you are eating too much salt every day, if you are eating too much sugar every day, it's cumulative. It, it, it adds up over time so that you become heavier, your heart is weaker, your body is, your joints start aching 
Um, there's all sorts of side effects and people want to deny that. They don't want to think they're poisoning themselves. Uh, and it's the same with this denying of factual events. So I think the Gorilla Mountain blog blogger is using just statistics. He's reading how many people the CDC say are sick, how many people are being tested, how many people are dying, etc. And he's coming to the same conclusions I am. Now, I'm not a prognosticator. I'm not saying that Yahweh spoke to me himself. That's what prophets do. Prophets don't foresee the future. Prophets are told by God what the future is going to be and given a certain message to tell to God's people. That's how prophets work. Now, Nostradamus, different. Different. It's just different for somebody else. And in, in my belief system, God tells me if I don't see a danger and warn other believers and other people about that danger, then if something happens to them, their blood is on my hands. So I can't, in all conscience, see these things and not try to share them with you so you can act so you can decide and then act and one of the biggest actions pastor and I take is we are quarantining ourselves and if I have to go into town I wear a mask and I wear gloves and I wash my hands a lot and I don't I social distance as much as I can that is a the four number one actions you can take right now recommended by everybody so you can be a denial about it and you can say I'm going to plus up my immune system. Well, when the, vi the virus and the Spanish flu time mutated in this time frame-ish, June, July-ish, it got m more deadly. And the way it was more deadly is it caused the <clears throat> immune system to react so strongly that it drowned the people who had the virus. It, their lungs would fill with fluid and they would die. So if your immune system is super strong and this thing mutates, you're actually in more danger from it if it mutates. If it mutates. I'm, I'm not, it could also mutate downwards and be less and less serious. But the serious wave of the Spanish flu struck 25 to 35 year olds in greater numbers than it did young and old people. And so that's one of the signs one would be looking for to see if this thing mutated. But if it does mutate, you're going to hear about it. The news is going to report that. And the Spanish flu killed people in 24 hours. So this could get really, really serious. And you should be prepared for that. You should also be prepared for if it doesn't. If, it, if we get it under control and people start social distancing, um, and the numbers go down, you should be ready for that. Uh, President Trump is really, you know, very big on the economy, and the economy is going to recover once this is all over. Um, but keep in mind that the Spanish flu, it took two years for that to burn itself out. And so we could possibly be looking at two years before things return to normal. So it's time for you to decide, and it's time for you to act. Get out of denial. Um, quit listening to people who say things like all you have to do is boost your immunity or viruses aren't viruses. It, that's ridiculous. Microscopes, la la la. They can figure this stuff out. Your body likes being in stasis. It's not going to get out of stasis just to purge itself in spring and fall. That's not what's happening here. Do you see this stuff behind me? I see this stuff every day. Every single plant out here is fighting for its life. It's, they, they bolt up, they get seeds, and then they make as many seeds on this stalk as they can to throw them down in the hopes that a couple of these plants will live next year. And they're all in competition with each other. And all the insects that are out here, and they're climbing up my legs and they're flying around my head, all these insects are in competition with these plants and each other because they eat the plants. They lay eggs on the plants and their larvae go and chew into the plants. And, and suck the marrow out of them. It's competition, folks. So the virus is competing with you and your body to try to make itself survive. That's why it jumps from host to host to host. It's a survival mechanism of the virus. Oh my gosh, I've got an ant biting my ankle. So it's not your body doing that. Your body in its stasis mode is ready to fend off invaders. 
It's when you introduce things like viruses, bacteria, etc. You get a cut in your skin and then you get a bacteria in it and now you have an infection. That's how it works. So get out of denial, get into the decision and action. And I think that's going to help you. And thank you for watching, y'all. Bless you. I've got work to do. Shalom.